This video will change your life. That's a big call, right? <laughs> That's a big call. Um, two reasons I want to talk about identity again today. Um, last night, Satya and I watched a movie. Uh, it was called The Hitman. It's on Netflix. If you've not seen it, it's incredible. And um, at the time of doing this video, I think it's number one in the, in the YouTube chart. And what was really significant about this movie is, uh, I don't want to spoil it, but this guy um, who is portraying a hitman, he actually isn't a hitman. He's like a, he's sort of like a, a researcher for the police or something. And he pretends to play a hitman to basically go into conversations with people who are considering hiring a hitman to kill their significant other, right? And once they admit that they want to actually kill a person and they hand over the money, the police come in and they arrest this person, right? And he's really good at getting people to commit and, and, and confess. And I don't want to tell you any more of the movie because it'll spoil it. It's a really good movie. You should watch it. But what was really significant about this movie was um, I've been speaking a lot about identity, right? And from the guy in the, guy in the uh, movie is called Gary. But his alias is called Ron. And Ron, when he goes to all these meetings, he'll dress different. As he gets more confident, he starts putting on voices. And he just kind of grows into this role of being a hitman. And then he meets a girl and there's a love interest. And the rest is kind of history. You get, you get the gist of it. It's quite a formulaic movie from, from there on out. But it's a really good movie. And what's really amazing is that that's really like... Even though this is a movie, I truly believe that we have the opportunity to change our identity. You know, like you might have a social situation where you're uh, maybe not confident or you're an introvert. And then you have another situation where you're really confident. And in that moment, that is a, that is a change of identity. Like I know people that are like really confident CEOs and then I put them in a gym environment and they kind of... They kind of fall apart and they're like weak and meek and totally different. And an experience to kind of um, illustrate this that's personal to me. At the time of doing this video, this afternoon, I went to record um, videos in the studio for YouTube um, advertisements. And I've not done YouTube ads before, like I've never done it. Um, and even though I've shot like thousands of hours of like video and um presented like seminars online for like thousands of hours um, over the past few years um, until I went into the studio today I had I had nerves right I had a it was like I was I was kind of faking it till I make it like I was you know I went in and I was in a really good state and to cut a long story short I really enjoyed it but what's amazing is now that I've been in for like one hour I earlier, uh, when I got home, I put on YouTube and there was an ad and straight away I saw this person doing an ad who I know actually. And I was immediately like, oh yeah, ad. And if you'd have asked me just three days ago, I'd have seen an ad and I would have been comparing myself and thinking about, I had this upcoming pending ad shoot and I would have been thinking about how I'm going to do and all this kind of stuff. I don't compare myself to other people as much as I used to, because I've been doing a lot of inner child work and um, a lot of inner child meditations. So it's something I'm aware of and I'm doing a lot of work around and I'm really feeling my way through that. But it really just fascinates me thinking about this movie and thinking about how I've now got, you know, a session of YouTube recordings under my belt. How a lot of whether we, you know, whether we believe we are or aren't something is just, it's just a manifestation in our mind. It's just, it's just made up. It's not even real. And yet we make it real. And often we're making decisions about ourselves that are disempowering. Like we're, we're, we're deciding, you know, I'm this and he's that and she's this and she's that. and I'm not that. And I definitely can't do that. Right. And all of it is just, it's just made up. It's just, it's just made up stuff designed to create 
self-imposed limitations keep us safe, keep us in this certain reality where we feel safe. Um, and it's just fascinating me. Like this video today is probably going to be a short one, but um, I really want to kind of highlight to you, you know, like you heard the cliche of, you know, you know, you, your dream life is outside your comfort zone. Well, I don't necessarily believe that your dream life is outside your comfort zone, but I do believe that when you expand your identity, like when you literally force yourself to do things that you would say, oh, I'm not, I, I'm not one of those people. Like, oh, you know, oh, I'm not a salesperson. Like forcing yourself to do things that make you feel uncomfortable. Now, not things that are actually going to cause you physical harm, right? But obviously, when you do things that you would not normally do because you have an identity, what, what's, you know, even that sales thing is amazing. Like I hear people say, I'm not a salesperson. Who are you? And they'll say, oh, I'm, you know, I'm a coach. Okay, okay. When did you decide to be, when did you decide that? Or when I got certified? And so they've made the decision that their identity is coach. So they want to wear that label, but they don't want to wear the other label because often the connotation of sales is um, high chance of rejection. Here's the, here's the uncomfortable truth. If you want to be successful in life, you're going to have to get rejected. It's just, you're just going to have to. A lot. It's just the way it is. Um, and I reference this book so many times because hopefully someone's going to read it. I get no credit for this whatsoever. But Joe Dispenza's book, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. The whole point of that title is he's trying to highlight the fact that you are not who you think you are. You are just a figment of your imagination. You're just a, you're just a made up like ball of glue that is just like stuff. You know, we are in, we are human beings and we are spirit and we are soul and we are part of the universe. And, but most of the other stuff is just like made up. It's just stories and beliefs and ideal ideations ideations and is that even a word i don't know who cares um it's just crazy so when you when you realize that you are not who you think you are like here's a question do you know who you are do you know who you are it's funny two years ago i just said i didn't know who i was until now, like two years ago. And now I definitely don't know who I am. <laughs> so two years ago, I just said, I don't know who I am. And then I started to go, I know myself now. And now I'm like, I don't know myself. The only difference is I'm now comfortable with not knowing. And all that happened before when I didn't know myself to know myself was I had a label of not knowing. And then I created a label of knowing. So I had this belief, I don't know myself. And then I took it off and put on a new one. I do know myself. <laughs> it's all just made up. <laughs> it's really funny. It amuses me. How we just believe stuff. Because we just do. Like, you know, this is NLP stuff. You know, we talk in NLP about deleting, distorting. And um, I can't remember what the third one was. Andy Coley, if you're watching, you'll tell me. Um, but we, we, you know, uh, a powerful meditation that I came across recently, it's called the revision technique. And the revision technique is really all about finding a past experience and that you have in your mind and you probably have, you, without even knowing it, you probably have changed that event. Like some story now will have been attached to an event because every event that we have every experience we have we create a belief so we put a that's what this is on it right just because we want to compartmentalize so we can understand life but the revision technique talks about replaying back a past experience and changing the meaning so powerful like i have some unresolved 
emotional triggers around things to do with my childhood. So I'm spending time at the moment doing the revision technique so that I can dig back into what's the truth. Like Tony Robbins talks about this concept of like divorce the story, marry the truth. What he means by that is at times in life we have, we create a story and I'm guilty of this. I've created stories of what things mean and who, you know, this person's this way and they're that way. Create stories, right? And Tony Robbins talks about divorce the story, marry the truth. What he means is that often the experience is completely different to the story that we tell ourselves about the experience. Like we'll tell ourselves that happened and this person did this and that person did this. I'm guilty of this, by the way, just so you know. Um, but then when we, we do the revision technique, the point of it is to create a positive meaning for every experience. So it's basically about looking at, a, you know, initially don't start off with some really bad experience, but start off with a mildly uncomfortable experience and then revise the experience. Like, well, what could be the positive? It's kind of like many years ago at the end of COVID, I came across an old man in our estate and I don't know where the conversation came from. I don't remember the ins, ins and outs. All I remember about the conversation is he said that he's in, he's really enjoyed covid and what he meant was he said this is the closest i felt we as human beings are to each other since the end of world war ii i thought isn't that interesting because a lot of people when they talk about covid my wallpaper's falling down it's a it's not real <laughs> a lot of people when they talk about covid they will um talk about how bad it was and here you've got this old man in his like 80s, describing it as the best time since post-World War II. I thought, isn't that amazing how he's reframed it in that way? So slightly off tangent, but my point being is that identity is really powerful. There's some great meditations around identity on YouTube. I'm probably going to create something at some point. Um, but just become aware and more conscious of when you believe something or think something, start to challenge it. Is that true? Because most things aren't true. Most things are just, you know, it's true that we need oxygen to breathe and we're going to die one day. But other than that, there's, there's not that many universal truths, right? So pay attention, analyze, watch your thoughts. Um, and again, another Joe Dispenza quote. Joe's getting a lot of credit today. I love his work. One of, his, one of my favorite things that he says is, um, just because I hear a thought doesn't mean it's true. Isn't that powerful? Just because I hear a thought doesn't mean it's true. It's a beautiful, beautiful distinction. Anyway, look, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I've enjoyed making it. Keep challenging your beliefs. Keep thinking about challenging your thoughts and uh, do something this week that scares you, that gets you out of your comfort zone, that gets you to expand your identity. That's it for today. See you tomorrow. Goodbye.